Okay, you guys, this is uh, part one of constructing exponential functions. This is module 14.3 uh, in our textbook that we're following, Integrated Math 1. So our essential question is, what are discrete exponential functions? So, so recall, uh, a discrete function is a graph that consists of just points. They're not a connected line or connected curve. They're just points right there. You're hearing my fireplace crackle in the, in the background there, so that's what all those pops are. It's a cold December day here. In Sacramento. Anyways, uh, here's a table. So we're going to talk about this and we'll graph all these points. So this table represents the cost of tickets to an annual event as the function of the number of T tickets purchased. So we're going to complete the table by adding 10 to each successive cost. And then we'll plot these ordered pairs over here. We're going to plot all of these over here. So here's 1, 10. That's where this ordered pair came from. 2 comma 20 so it says to just add 10 so uh, 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 10 is 30 and then 40 and then 50 okay let me move this up here okay so there they are right there and then it gives us those ordered pairs and then when we graph these we're going to graph 1 comma 10 so over here would be over 1 up 10 okay so it looks like these tick marks are going by fives right here and um, every two tick marks gives us one right here so here's 2 comma 20 right there okay and then 3 comma 30 okay so here they are all plotted right there and those are called discrete because we do not connect those because we can't sell a half of a ticket right here so that's why we can only sell whole number of tickets right here so that's what makes this a, a discrete function right here. Okay, so here's another one. So the number of people attending a, an event doubles each year. So the table represents the total attendance at the annual event as a function of the, of the event number n. Okay, so complete the table by multiplying each successive attendance by 2 because it, it said they doubled. So that just means multiply by 2. And then we'll plot all these ordered pairs over here. So 20 times 2 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. 80 times 2 is 160. And then this is going to be 320 right there. Okay, so there's the ordered pairs right there. So here we're going to graph 1, 20. So 1 over 1 over 1 up 20 these little each square is 20 so it's going to be right there and then over 2 up uh, up 40 this should be a 40 whoops I made a mistake right there this should be a 40 right there so we'll go over 2 up 40 okay so um, uh, and then we'll go over 3 up 80 and then over 4 up 160 so here's these graphs right here Okay, so over 1 up 20, over 2 up 40, over 3 up 80. So this is, doesn't even look like it's going to be a straight line. And this is what's called an, an exponential graph when it makes this sort of J sort of shape right here. Okay, sometimes it'll go down like this. Sometimes it goes up much steeper. Okay, or sometimes it goes up much more gradual. So exponentials always make these J kind of uh, curve sort of things. <clears throat> and we can't have a, an event and a half right there, so that's why this one's also discrete. Okay, so complete the table. So the first one was the function f, and the second one was the function g. So was the first one linear? Here's the pictures of them right here. Was this one linear? Well, uh, yes, it is a linear function right there, although it is discrete. We do not connect them right here. Discrete just means they're just isolated points right there. So but this one's not a linear function. It makes what's called an exponential J curve right there. So are they linear? Well, the first one is. The second one uh, is not, and they're both discrete because they're just isolated points. They would not be discrete if we connected them with a curve right here, or in this case with a line right here. That's the difference between discrete and non-discrete. Okay, so an exponential function is a function that has the equation of the form um, f of x equals a times b to the x. Okay, this should look familiar. We just got done with doing um, uh, what would the geometric sequence is, and I'll show you that formula in just a second here. So uh, where a and b and x are real numbers, so these are all real numbers. You'll talk about imaginary numbers in, I think it's integrated math 2, I think, you guys. Anyways, a can't be 0, and b is greater than 1, but it could be a fraction, like 1 half or something. And and uh, b can't be 1, so it's it could be a fraction, anything between 0 and 1. Ooh, there's a big pop in my fireplace. 
uh, and anything above one, but it can't be one, and we'll talk about that later. So remember, geometric sequences look like this. This was my nth term equals the first term times r to the n minus 1. Well, this first term is this guy right here, and this r is b right here, and this n minus 1 represents x. So they're the same uh, uh, form right there. Okay, so let's review 0 and negative exponents. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, so if I had 10, 10 to the 0 equals 1, uh, 28 to the 0 equals 1, 5 halves to the 0 equals 1, anything to the 0 equals 1. And this number just can't be 0, that's all this says right there, okay? And the next one is if we have a negative exponent, then you slip it in the denominator and it becomes a positive exponent. Okay, and again, this can't be zero right here. And if we have a negative exponent in the denominator, then it slips up in the numerator and it becomes positive right there. And then finally, if we have a fraction to a negative fraction to a negative exponent, you just flip the fraction and it becomes a positive exponent. Now your textbook won't give you these rules right here, but they sure are handy to know right there. Okay, so let's complete the table for each function and using the given domain. Then we'll graph the function using the ordered pairs from the table right here, okay? So here's an exponential function right here, okay? So 3 times 1 half to the x power, and we're going to plug in negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's all these right here, and we're going to get these f of x's right here, and it'll give us these ordered pairs. All right, let's plug in negative 1, you guys, okay? So we plug in negative 1 for x right there. Remember, a fraction to a negative exponent to a negative exponent, it flips. So if we flip 1 over 2, it becomes 2 over 1 or 2, and it becomes a positive exponent. So any fraction to a negative power, flip it, and it becomes a positive power. And then we get 3 times 2, which equals 6 right there. All right, let's try uh, 0. Remember, anything to the 0 equals 1, so 1 half to the 0 is this 1 right here, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that's where we got that 3 right there. All right, so let's plug in uh, 1 right here. So uh, 1 half, remember we have to do exponents first. So we got to do 1 half to the 1 power, which is 1 half. And then 3 times a half is 3 halves, and 3 halves is equal to 1 and a half. And we write it 1 and a half because it's easy to graph uh, up 1 and a half squares right there. Okay, so now we got to do the exponent first, 1 half squared. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, so 1 half squared is 1 fourth, and then 3 times 1 fourth, remember this is 3 over 1, so 3 over 1 times 1 over 4 is 3 fourths, okay? All right, so we'll do 1 half cubed, okay? So 1 half cubed, you've got to do the exponent first, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, and 3 times 1 eighth is 3 eighth. Finally, 1 half to the fourth. 1 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th is 16, so 3 times uh, 1 16th is 3 16th, okay? So it gives us these ordered pairs. Now we're going to go ahead and graph those right here. So we're going to graph negative 1 6, so to the left 1, up 6, so it's going to be right there. And the next one is 0 3, so 0 3. The next one is over 1, up 1 and a half. Over 1, up 1 and a half, right about there, and so on. So when we do that, we get those ones right there. This is an exponential graph right here, where it's um, a times b to the x power right there. It's an exponential graph. And it's exponential because our x is in the exponent, okay? That's how we tell if it's exponential, is if our x is in the exponent, okay? And it's going to make a sort of a backwards j graph on that, okay? All right, let's try it with this guy right here, okay? So we're going to plug in negative uh, 2. So negative 2, remember a, a fraction to a negative exponent? We flip the fraction, it becomes a positive exponent. So 3 squared is 9. 9, 4 squared is 16, so 3 over 1 times 9 over 16, 3 times 9 is 27 over 16. And 16 goes into 27 once with 11 left over, so we're going to graph 1 and 11 16. So, all right, let's plug in negative 1. It becomes a flip the fraction, and then it becomes a positive 1, and 3 times 3 is 9 fourths, so, and then 4 goes into 9 twice, so 2 and a fourth. So we're going to go to the left one, up two and a fourth, okay? So when we plug in zero, anything to the zero is one. Three times one is three. Plug in uh, one, four-thirds to the one, and then three times four-thirds. These threes cancel, so we're left with one times four, which is four, okay? And then when we plug in two, we're going to square uh, four-thirds, four squared over three squared. 
Now I could have canceled this three and this nine right here, but I did it at the very end right here. Okay, so I got 48 nights, and then uh, nine goes into 48 five times with three left over. Nine times five is 45, and then three ninths is one third. We could have canceled it right here. This goes in here three times, and then three goes into 16 five times with one left over. Okay, and then finally, let's do the cubed one right there. Okay, so there they are. Oh, they already did it for us right there. Sorry. Now we're going to graph this. So we're going to go uh, to the right 2, up 1, and 11 sixteenths. To the right 2, here's up 1, and 1 and a half is right about there. So 1 and 11 sixteenths would be right there. Okay, whoops, this should be a negative 2. That should be a little negative right there. I'm going to put a sneaky little negative in right there. Okay, so it's over here. So to the left two, um, and then it's going to be up right about there, one and eleven sixteenths right there. Okay, let me let me copy that there. Okay, okay, so uh, so here they are, all graphed right there. Can you see the sort of the slightly J curve right there? Well, it's because it's an exponential graph. So we have a times b to the x power right there. So as long as x is in the exponent, then it's um, then it's uh, uh, an exponential graph right there. So what would happen to the function uh, a times b to the x if a were equal to 0? Or well, if a were equal to 0, 0 times anything is 0. And so we'd have f of x equals 0 for all of x, no matter what would happen if b were equal to 1. Well, 1 to any power equals 1. So we'd be left with a times 1, which is just a. So if a were 0, then we'd get f of x equals 0 for all x. And that would just be a horizontal line, y equals 0. If b were equal to 1, then f of x would just equal a for all of x, which is also a horizontal line. And neither one of those would be exponential anymore. They would be linear. They'd be a horizontal line. And so why is a geometric sequence a discrete exponential function? Well, sequences, you guys, the inputs of sequence, their whole numbers, they increase by 1. And so that's what makes it discrete. Geometric sequences, the output values are related by the common ratio r. Remember, we did righty divided by lefty. Plus, the geometric sequence formula is, is in the form of your exponential for, uh, function. So here's our exponential function, f of x equals a times b to the x. And then geometric is the nth term equals your first term times r to the n minus 1. Well, r is the same as b. The first term is the same as a right here. And this n minus 1 is that right there. All right. If you're in my class, I'm going to have you do a few problems that we just did. You're going to be graphing some. Take care, you guys.